currently sailing downwind. Uh, got a bit of wave on the quarter. In the distance there, you might be able to see that's the Nays Tower. So we're just south of Walton on the Nays and Clacton. Out here. And there's several other yachts running down into the black water. We're on our way to the Junk Rig Rally that's happening tomorrow. Uh, I just thought I'd come down early, make sure I could get here and have a little look around on my own. And then we'll be joining other Junk Rig boats tomorrow. The boats, the autopilot is doing the steering for me at the moment, it has been most of the day. Um, it's only uh, 10.30, so we haven't been going all that long. It started about 7. Um, the autopilot seems to be okay. Uh, I'm hoping that that solar panel there, which I've just just got uh, duct taped to the locker here as a tryout, is keeping up with, this, with the drain from the auto helm. It's a little difficult to tell at the moment because the battery is uh, kind of broken. The battery's okay, but it's only getting to about 10 volts. Um, and it's an old battery that I got picked up of somebody, uh, my dad gave it to me, and I need to uh, get a proper leisure battery. But it seems to be fine. I'm you know, doing all right. No, no, nothing's, nothing's working. Um, so I'm kind of interested to see whether this will keep this arrangement will keep going in this uh, fairly sunny situation. That'll be useful to know. But the autopilot is kind of noisy, and I'm not. One of my priorities now, I think, is to get uh, wind vane which will sit here and steer nicely in these situations without me having to have any electrical setup. That will uh, help a lot. The autopilot will be just for the occasional use. Um, it, it's fine. Um, I'd rather it wasn't making that whining noise. The uh, difficulties I'm having here on the stern, the, this, is the, this is the original setup of the boat, pretty much, and the, the uh, rail there, the, the uh, main sheet goes to the rail there, and the main problem with that is, uh, well, it's not adjustable to windward when you're on the uh, port tack, and several people have said you'll get better performance if I could have it adjustable. So I'm thinking about, and also the, it doesn't, the, the only way to lock it off is to use this cleat here, which is kind of awkward. It, it's okay, but it's a little tricky with one hand, and if you keep the, if you keep the sheet wrapped around the cleat, you just, um, it just has too much friction. If you don't wrap it around, then you're going to kind of lean over and wrap it around. So it would be nice to have a, a, a self a camming cleat or something. But also, uh, I think this is kind of the wrong place and it maybe needs to be on a sliding force or something, um, which would have another effect, which is that this ensign, it's obviously very nice. It loves to get tangled up in those cheap blocks. I mean, especially downwind and it just happens just when you don't need it to, so it's just the wrong arrangement really. Uh, so I think the engine will stay where it is, but the sheet will move. That's my plan. So I've got to figure out a good arrangement there. It's working okay. There's a bit of evidence that it pulls on the rail. That it, yeah, it's uh, clearly being pulled a bit, being pulled up a bit. So that's uh, not so good. All of these deck fittings, like here, what I want to do is take them up, reseal them, but also put a little bit of padding underneath, uh, either a thin piece of uh, plywood or some uh, some uh, rubber or lino type padding, just to stop any direct um, pressing on the deck. Like here, you've got a bit of cra star, the crazing there, cracking, probably caused by direct pressure of stainless steel on fiberglass, which isn't great. So I just want to make sure everything's got a little bit of give. It's going to give, but it needs a bit of padding there, and that'll help to keep the boat in good condition. And so that's a job to do. Uh, let's see these lockers here. So this is a, this is this lovely huge cockpit on the Coromandel. Even though it's only a 20 foot boat, these are my feet. I'm a six foot tall person, and you can see I've got plenty of room here to to sit around, and there's lots of room up here to. To sit and uh, I know that some uh, Roger Taylor, for example, has uh, arranged his cockpit, way to almost remove his cockpit, but he's doing a quite a different style of sailing than I intend to. And I spend, I, I expect to spend quite a lot of time out here. Um, so these two large lockers here, 
and I'll talk about the flies in a minute. These flies are quite interesting. These two lockers here, this is the, this is the port quarter locker. This has got the gas bottle, 50 litres of water, and this is the um, sea kayak, the inflatable sea kayak, which is really fun and uh, fast and nice to use. And various handles, there's the build pump handle, extra pump, a few extra bits, pieces there, hose, and then like buried at the bottom there is some extra oil and uh, engine oil. Uh, the other problem with this, as you can see, is that it's a lot to get caught in that. It's so good. And then the other locker here is actually the engine locker. Lift up carefully. Here's the outboard in the well and it's fuel and the battery. So, uh, this cable wouldn't, I'm not going to leave that cable dangling around like that. That's just temporary set up with the solar panel. And we have a connection for the autopilot that I put in. This is a waterproof connector and a build pump. Now this, uh, there's a really huge deck locker here. Lots of room. It's just enormous. I mean, it's on the other side. This, this same locker is a quarter berth, so you can imagine how big it is. And there's plenty of room in here. And under here is the toilet seat cock, toilet seat cock extension. A flare pack. A nice bucket. A really good lanyard. Uh, yeah, lots of ropes, tarpaulin, sail cover. All the wet locker stuff. There's a man overboard retrieval loop thing here. Um, um, yeah. So plenty of room for all the fenders and ropes and so on. And uh, I say so, now I put the fender in. It's slightly skewed and I can't close it. There we go. Um, when I, it, whenever I tidy this up, it becomes half empty again. So it just needs a bit of. Uh, I'll tidy up a bit later. Who's stopping that? Oh, I think it, it's actually, yeah, again, the sheet rope. That's what's stopping it, not the. There we go. And then the other side is not, the other side is the, under here is then a, a quarter bear. Um, so, let's look forwards. So the star, on the starboard side we've got the main sheet, uh, the, the main halyard, sorry, and uh, the yard hauling parrel and uh, luff parrel, and that's uh, that's the starboard topping left. So this is something really fun about the jump rig. Um, at the moment we're running downwind and the sail is kind of squared off, so it's quite a long way across the mast and it's acting like a big square rig sail but you can by hauling on this barrel here I'll, I'll pull it and you watch what happens with the sail loosen that up just get this more it's a little bit difficult to do this holding the camera there we go so just by hauling on that I can pull the sail across the mast Turn it into. There we go. I'll put it back in, that'll be easier, and you'll see what happens. There. So you can adjust the position of the sail and, and change the balance of the boat. So that's one of your main sail trim actions. And then the, the yard hauling parrel, there's a little loop up there with a piece of pipe on it to stop chafe. And that's, that's the yard hauling parrel. So I can, by adjusting that, allow the yard to move away from the last. Okay. That whole thing at all. This is the the main sheet is a a balance sheet so it's attached to the bottom uh, what's that bottom five 
um, battens. The boom is not really much bigger than any of the battens. It's not entirely clear to me why it isn't just the batten. But uh, there you go. Um, now some people have an extended second batten at the top and they have a sheet that goes to that too to reduce twist or control twist. Uh, that might happen on the next version of the rig. And you can also set up all sorts of clever arrangements with these uh, sheet lines to apply different amounts of force at different heights and control twists. This is a, one of the simplest, old, oldest arrangements. Seems to be working right at the moment. But again, one of those tweaks that we can do to improve the performance. Uh, I haven't really got anything at the top of the mast. There's no VHF aerial because I've got no uh, made VHF at the moment. I will fix one up if I start going more offshore. Uh, Windex, well, I don't know. I just feel the wind. Quite nice to have. I've got one. I haven't fixed it up yet. The ropes you can see flapping around are actually um, these spares here. I don't. This is something I don't understand. In the, I, I found on the net uh, the rigging list with all the ropes and lengths. And for some reason, the um, the thing called the, the burgy halyard, which is roughly speaking what that is, it's the longest rope on the boat. It's 50 something foot long. I don't understand why you, I don't understand how it was rigged and why it would be so enormously long. But I've got one anyway, and I've kind of just made something out of it. And I've got my uh, Cambridge University Yacht Club and Junk Rig Association burgies flying in the, in the forward, in the forward uh, triangle there. See out there, there's the big sand wind farm. I'm kind of heading towards to have a look at. Quite impressive. Here's a couple of oars I picked up from eBay. Uh, they're about 2.2 meters long. They could be a lot longer, uh, it would be helpful. But these were what I could get, and they have been really handy for paddling around. And I can just about skull with one of them to move around a bit, but I haven't really set up properly. Uh, I haven't really got a sculling point organised, but it's been useful when the engine broke, especially for just uh, getting around the marina. That's pretty handy. Uh, let's see, what else we going to say? This is the port side there, that's just the port side topping lift, which is that arrangement that is also could be called laser jacks, but on the junk rig it's much more important as a top, it is really a topping lift, more than just a, a rigging arrangement, because it really holds, when, the, when you're reefed, um, it's what holds the boom up. When you reef and let the battens collapse, it has both functions, so it's more of a topping lift than a just a laser jack. It's, a, it's, it's an important part of the, of the rig. And we get compass, log, and depth. Nothing special about that. Uh, the strong point here. I've just got this set up just in case it starts feeling insecure. Right now, it's just uh, all very pleasant. There's not really any problems. These cockpit drains are a bit small. I mean, they, they work, but. Uh, one of the things mentioned on the Corby website is one of the standard upgrades is to turn these into one and a half inch drains. I think uh, what somebody said was that if the cockpit, if you do get a wave breaking over and the cockpit fills up, you've got time to have a nice bath before it empties. And uh, they upgraded their cockpit drains to one and a half inch and they said they wouldn't even have time to fetch the soap. So I think that's probably a good move especially if I'm doing more offshore sailing because I think these are very weedy and they do take quite a long time to drain even an inch of water out of the bottom here. And the, because there's no, the back of the cockpit here is just is sealed, which I also wonder about. I wonder whether it wouldn't be an idea to have a big drain at the back. Yeah, think about that. The uh, build, main bilge pump pipe actually comes up just under here and up through to the back. 
so maybe some arrangement could be sorted out there. Let's have a little look inside. I don't know, I wonder if there's anything else to talk about right here. Not a lot. One of the things on the on the Coromandel here is that the top sides were redesigned from the Coroby top sides to take advantage of the junk rig. And so the the, the deck part, the deck halves, is quite different, even though the bottom half of the boat is basically the same hull. And one of the key things here is that this big bathtub-like cockpit um, with these high combings and the which means that it's quite comfortable but also quite dry and one of the reasons you could do that is there's no jib so no jib sheets to come through no winches for jib sheets um, but you can also see that it doesn't it's not really designed for you to go out of the cockpit there's no kind of obvious path out of the cockpit to the front of the boat and you have to step over and down on these very small side decks again because there's no jib sheets Side decks are really small, I mean, big enough for a boot. Because you're just not going up there very regularly. Uh, you possibly can, but the, actually the best route is straight over the top. But it's a little disconcerting for people who are used to going walking up the front a lot. And the fore deck is, is really small, just enough for the ankle locker and a big cleave. Uh, because the, um, the cabin is much larger than on the Coraby is pushed out to the sides because of the small side decks and pushed forwards a long way because of the not, no need for a large fore deck and because the mast is a long way forward compared to uh, the Bermudan mast. That means the cabin is really big for the size of the boat uh, and it's very comfortable down there. Let's have a look. I'm just going to look around before I disappear down here. Make sure no one's coming towards me. All pretty clear. Okay, we can go down for a few minutes. So here we are in the cabin. I apologise for the headlining. The, uh, the headlining is from the original boat. The boat was stored for 25 years in a garden. Um, kept really nicely, I have to say, but the headlining didn't really survive. The foam on the back has kind of just dried out and rotted and it's all coming unglued. So right now I've got a kind of tape holding up. It's one of those horrible jobs that I don't want to do before I go sailing because I just want to get some sailing done. So right now this is it for the season and then I'll uh, fix it all up at the end of the season. I've got plans involving using um, some of this, some, some, be some better insulation and flotation foam. Uh, I apologise for the flies, more about the flies in a minute. The uh, this is some um, plaster's oat, which is uh, something that Roger Taylor uh, recommended for um, insulation and, and buoyancy. And I also had a go at burning it here. I have a little video of me trying to set fire to it. This is flame retardant plaster's oat. And uh, although it melts, it really wouldn't catch fire when I tried to burn it. It just put itself out. Um, and this is just a sample I got from the manufacturer. Uh, and my idea is to take some of this, probably not this thick, but is to put that up here and fix it up with, um, I'm not telling you how to glue it all up, but I want to put um, some wooden battens up here, which I can screw into and then have a kind of Chesterfield sofa type arrangement where this is held up by uh, a cover. Um, and that will provide a lot of insulation and padding, obviously and flotation. Since this stuff is closed cell, it doesn't get wet. This particular piece, I had it at the bottom of a bucket for a week with a brick on it, and it just didn't absorb any water. I can make out at all. So that's um, good stuff. Uh, expensive though, unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, that's my plan there for later. That'll make the boat very, uh, both warm and cool, I hope. So yeah, let's have a look around. That looks a lot worse from in here than it is out there. It's lovely and sunny out there. I'm just gonna have another look around. Clear. The 
Yeah, so here we got the quarter berth. It's stuffed with my sleeping bag and a few other bits in there. But that's a really nice big quarter berth, plenty of room. Um, and that is part inside the cockpit combing there is a is a essentially a wardrobe rail. Um, I haven't really used it myself for that purpose, but uh, you can hang your clothes up in there. And there's quite a lot of space back there, down there. Uh, that's just the box for the um, solar panel there. It's empty and charts piled up. Um, the electrical panel I've remade. Uh, I'm going to remake it again so that it doesn't protrude. At the moment, people putting their feet down here are quite likely to kick stuff sticking out of here. So I'm going to move the whole thing back a bit. Um, and I've got a new digital voltmeter which is, won't draw any power. You can see this battery is a bit poor. It really won't keep more than 10 volts in it at the moment. 